do. I know uh, I probably told you guys this, but I like to um, really tank up. I'm a very defensive person. When I, and when I play these games, I usually like to have real tanky characters. Characters that can take a lot of hits and deal a lot of damage, um, but are not necessarily the most agile. And this I have a lot more agile characters than that I, I'm using a lot of archers. But, yeah, I like to keep my guys real tanky, and that's kind of why I haven't really been going as much with, like, the dodging. Because I just focus so much on making them really, like, her tanky. I'm just going to keep using the word tanky. Hack on. Before they take you away from me as well. Ringing bells. Onward! Da -da -da -da. Onward we go! Where are we losing these fighters in Varl at? Are they just dying? What's happening? They say the moon and stars are always visible when you look at Leiga's godstone. How can that be true? I don't know. Dude, there was a giant snake and darkness chasing us. Pretty much anything can be true. Whoa, hey, boobies. Yes. By moon and stars, they just mean everybody just stops to gaze at her titties. And she looks like she's into it. She's like, hey, sailor. We're just gonna walk past, I guess? It's pretty. She's got, she does have the moon and stars thing going on. Is she like a goddess of the heavens? <laughs> Only her head lights up, not her titties. The moon, her spirit, the stars, her eyes. Elio says, plucking a few strings of his instrument. Oh, is he a bard? Log Lauga? Lauga, the god of beauty and of, well, things that happen in the night. The scald smiles. The gods may be dead, but my wife still prays to Lauga. I am thankful for her piety. Rare. Nice. The Scald is not the only one smiling. A quick look around reveals grins throughout the caravan. I see why Abarang has grown so quickly over the years, you say, the Scald laughs. A truth spoken in front of Lauga Stone is supposed to ripple through the night, either strengthen a lover's resolve or carry away undesired affection. Elio skips away to find his wife. Yeah, you get some, buddy. They're gonna have sex. He's skipping away. In the shadow of Lauga's godstone, Oddleaf taps you on the shoulder. Incredible, isn't it? The godstone, or us making it to Abarang? We haven't made it yet. <laughs> Both, I guess. Job well done, Rook. You deserve a reward. Sexy reward? Sexy reward? <laughs> I, my, my sole goal now in this game is to get Rook laid. Um, do you have a reward in mind? A couple of ideas, yes. Oh, and how do I go about finding out what these are? You have absolute, you have to be absolutely sure you want to know. Are you absolutely sure? Her grin is telling. I am absolutely sure. Let's do this. Good, but I can't really tell you here. This is gonna be like, shake them up for a picnic. No. Adleaf slowly shakes her head, her eyes never leaving yours. Whatever, she's gazing off my shoulder like a blind person. Hmm, well, let's look around for some place more suitable. Lead the way. And then Rook got his groove. Others see you smiling and watch the two of you disappear. People will talk, but who cares? Rawr. Yeah, Rook. Yeah, Oddleaf. Both of you. Both of you. Mm hmm. Achievement unlocked? Lauga. Yeah, you, the guy just totally watched us the entire time. 
so my my job here is done. I got Rook laid. All that's left is poor Folka, who's probably gonna die because I love her too much, and this game likes to break up my bro TPs. Still bitter. Is that where we're? Is that our spot? Yep. Yeah, we're gonna go there and probably get killed by something else. Finally, we made it. But why are so many camped outside the walls? They must have seen the darkness approaching. Wind ripples across the tents, which multiply the closer you get to Abarang. Dung litters the paths, and it is clearly not all from yaks. Rattling coughs mix with raucous laughter. Small fights break out for no apparent reason. Curious eyes grow wide as they spot the varl and the horseborn. Mothers grab their children, men their weapons. <laughs> After the scene that we just had with Rook, I'm thinking of a whole other kind of weapon for them to be grabbing. Various clan banners snap and whip in the wind. You recognize the heraldry of Car of Carlushus from Alios Tales and Strand's banner from previous talks with Ubin. There are even a few Cragsman banners, but they're by their muddy appearance. You also notice a division between each clan. There is no mixing or unity. Uh oh. I'll push ahead. Prince Luden says. My father will want to see me, and I'll be able to find out exactly what's going on here. Oh, Luden. Don't, don't anything happen to you, my precious baby. Yursa and a few fighters escort him through the crowds towards the wall. Old An Atticans people are here, you hear a woman from the caravan shout. I have to check on him. Others are finding familiar clans and kid as well, slowly drifting from your banner. Stay together. Bring them here. Say nothing, let, uh, letting them choose. If you leave us, you're banished. Um, no, Rook. Why are you even giving me these options? It's so un -Rook like Um. Uh, let's... You know, you know what? They can do what they want. I'm, it's gonna come back and bite me, but my people can do what they want. Many more are invited to rest around warm fires with friends. Taking their food with them, your numbers dwindle. The idea of your solitary clan under the Skulger banner begins to gutter. It's okay. We're just... People are just getting to know their friends, visiting their friends, unity. Where the crowd is most dense in volume and numbers, the caravan comes to a stop. Ahead, you notice a sharp line where the tents and people stop. The ground beyond is pinned with arrows and not much else. A hundred yards of enemy... Of empty space between these people and Aberang's walls. Oh, that's a good sign. My cat is here. In case you're wondering, in case you hear any clattering noises. It's not the same cat as was, as was here last time. It's a different cat. Here to cause trouble. What is this? You ask, confused by all you are taking in. That's the peaceful bit. An older fighter stands near you. He looks like the type who has seen enough things to lack enthusiasm for much of anything. The king's men can't kill us from the walls, and we can't kill them from here. But what's causing the fighting, you ask? A man's, the man smiles, his face unaccustomed to the action. Come on, Sunder Slayer, he says. It's the same damn thing that causes every fight. We've got something they want. King's got food and protective walls. We're starving with our asses facing that rolling darkness. The, world's, the words deal you a heavy blow. So, Aberang's at war. Are you surprised, Rook? How on earth would you be surprised by this? The man laughs a wicked laugh. That's putting it lightly, he says. From what I can tell, this is the rest of your kind. You brought the last of the viral and even dragged some worthless horseborn. This fight's for survival. Winner lives, loser's gone forever. He laughs and turns... His laugh turns into hysteria. You leave unsettled. I was already unsettled. I started unsettled. I showed up unsettled. Alright, so we have to fight our way up the hill? Is that what's going on? The yaks are tended and tents aligned as best as best as possible. Some are repairing their armor, others look anxious to talk to various clans. The Varl King's eyes scan the fields as he approaches. I want to know what's going on here as much as you, he says. But we'd better find a way to defend our gear and supplies. Those other clans could form a mob if they discover we have food. Seeing the hungry eyes all around, you agree. We have got an issue, Oddleaf says. 
I don't know why, but the other clans don't like the Horseborn. Or the Varl, for that matter. They're starting trouble, and I'm going to stop it. Uh, join Hack on establishing the fences. Investigate the standoff between the king and clans. Go with Oddleaf to stop the troublemakers. I think Hackon can do okay by himself. I think Oddleaf can probably do okay by herself, to be honest. Uh, so I feel like I should do this, because nobody else is doing this. I really hope that my two besties, uh, remaining besties, stay alive while I go do this. You leave Hackon in charge of the camp while you and a few others wander the collection of clans, asking various leaders for information. King's addled, an older woman tells you. Oh good, because we've got the prince and he's not addled. So we have to break in and remove him, a clan leader says. <clears throat> oh, a clan leader says he's not addled, he's just a bastard. Keeping the food we've, we sent him, leaving us to rot. Still another says, I heard he's dead and that the death stand son of his is responsible for all of this. No, I've got the son. After hours of trying to shift through the stories, you return to the caravan to hear similar results from the others. One clansman says a man told him that the menders took control of the king and are making him their puppet. You would be amused, you would be amused if you were not so tired. The mood has changed since you left. Another clan attacked us and we've lost some people, a fighter says. They said you, we're wrong for bringing Varl and Horseborn along. You feel they're accusing stairs, but say nothing. As soon as you find a stump on which to sit, you look up and see Rugga approaching. You again! The former governor is backed by nearly 50 fighters. Where does he keep finding people? He walks toward your camp. Everyone watches out of curiosity more than concern. You've been asking a lot of questions lately, he says. Sorry, that's my dog. Why don't you just come with me? I have been chosen to lead these clans against this king who has decided not to protect or feed his people. We should talk about your role and side in this. Just you and me. Not your side, you fuck nugget. I've discovered that these battle lines, what these battle lines are about. The king has shut his people out. These clans are here to see that he feeds and protects his people as he's supposed to. And they've chosen me to lead the cause. Yeah, no, fuck you. Fuck you with a wire brush. It's not gonna happen. Tent flaps close, leaving you and Rugga alone, both armed. No need to win mince words now, is there? I know you want to kill me. Only when I think about how you betrayed us. Like, several times. Then let's be clear. If either of us leaves this tent without the other, the fields around us will turn red. Then say what you came to say before I do something stupid. Rugga snorts his amusement. Don't you snort at me, motherfucker. I wasn't making that stuff up outside about the king. He really has shut all of us out. Yeah, I figured that out, dude. It started a few months ago when he started stockpiling food and slow tr and slowing trade. How do you know? Once the wealthy families were all pulled inside the walls, he shut the gates. The only thing he said is that he can't feed everyone. Oh, and his archers fire on anyone who gets close. He watched Rogue closely while deciding what to say. Why should I believe you at all? To what end? So you plan to break down his walls? Wait, how did you come to lead the clans? That is an excellent question. Borsgard is the... was the largest human town next to the capital. You don't become governor of a place like that without a certain skills and powerful friends. And what are those certain skills? The governor just smiles. Why should I believe you? Because you see all these people gathered, do you think they're out here for fun? No, but I doubt the king just wants to be an ass. You, on the other hand, if you're the king and your people are starving at your gates, do you let them in or keep them out? Don't answer. We both know you let them in, unless you knew something you weren't telling them. Either way, the people have the right to answer for to an answer or the food they sent him and Abarang's protection. I think you'd agree that food and walls belong to the kingdom, not the king. 
so you're planning to break down the walls? That's the last thing I want to do. We need those walls to stop the dredge and whatever else is coming behind them. We are so screwed, Rugga. Honestly, just to make our stand here, because either way. And if we... It, but if we have to destroy them, we will. Maybe the menders inside can repair any damage. There might be ways to put these first few walls, but the black wall... There might be ways past these first few walls, but the black wall... Black wall? Black wall from Dragon Age? So this war is... Uh, to what end? I'll ask to what end first. And that's what the upcoming battle aims to find out. You want to go to war to ask the king a question? No, I want to go to war to make the king answer a few questions, like why he'd leave his people outside the walls to starve. I'm sorry, but like, if Ludin comes out and tells me something different, I'm siding with Ludin in a heartbeat. I don't care. So this war is unavoidable. Probably. I officially meet with the king in a few hours to either come to an agreement or pull our banners from his. I won't be surprised if you're invited to the mighty Sunder Slayer and army. If so, make your decisions carefully. His tone is not exactly threatening. Not exactly. You move to the tent flaps and both of you open them simultaneously so no fight breaks out. Then I stab him! Wait. Oops. Um, oh. Who to talk to first? Well, I have been ignoring my horsey friends by not uh, dealing with their issues, so I'll talk to this guy first. Skathatch and Dee drew pace nervously, keeping their distance from the humans, Varl, and other horseborn. Roek patrols around the two a short distance away, nodding at you briefly. Is everything Okay. Many mans. More than we know live. You stop to look around at the thousands of tents and fields and hundreds of homes beyond the capital's walls. I'm from a small village. I'm not used to seeing this many people either. Maybe heard too big. So many mouths hungry. If some dead, more easy feet hurt. Scanthash stomps the ground and says a few shrill noises to Deidre before turning to you. Jidru forgets we are not of same thinking with mans. If you think Big Herd is right, we will think Big Herd is right. But what do you think is right, Skathash? The male horseborn looks up at Abarang for a few moments while switching his tail in thought. See, it switched. I think Big Herd kick each other in small fields. He points to Abarang. Small fields behind walls. You thank them for talking and offer them a few calming words before departing. The calming words are, who's a good pony? And they hate you for being racist. Uh, let's go talk to Trigivi or whatever his name is. The former cragsman is trying to lure something out of a hole with a small piece of dried meat on a string. Oh my gosh, dude. He leaves it dangling by his side while standing to talk. It looks like you're keeping busy. I'm playing fox and hare with a vole. I feel like with that mustache, I really have been wasting my time not giving him a southern accent. I might have to try and do that. Do you think the fox has ever played Tragivi and vole? No. Tragivi looks disappointed. Do you have any ideas how to keep these two groups from killing each other? Any powders or relics or crazy schemes? He reaches into his tunic and grabs something, pauses and releases whatever it is, and shakes his head. People kill each other every day. Just enjoy the show. But if it comes to war, I don't think either side will leave us out of it. Trigiri thinks about what you are saying. Tapping a fingernail against his teeth, he looks at his fingers, sneers, and spits. Killing kings requires a lot of lives. It's just, e it's just as easy to kill clansmen instead. Either way, some will praise you and others will throw a dung bag at your face. Or, or, you could collect all the dung into a giant hill and stand on top of it and then you'll be our king. As you watch him crouch back to his hole, you wonder what possessed you to speak to him. Uh, I think that was a glorious conversation and I do not regret a moment of it. 
Not a moment. Um, let's talk to you this day. The Skald is, try is tying a dyed strip of cloth into his daughter's hair. It sends her off to play as you near. <laughs> That's adorable! We've come all this way for war. Well, what else? With luck, I might change their minds. And the re and be the reed that would stop the wind. You've got a lyric for every moment, don't you? Of course. Plenty before us have been in similar situations and written about it. We only think our lives are unique. And if peace is not an option, is there a scald song for that? Plenty. But I'll tell you what I'd do. Save the families who can't save themselves. I can't imagine if my wife and children were left here, like they don't deserve the same protection from uh, as others. Well, now I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to bring... If, if it, the option comes up to save the women and children, I'm going to have to, because his family is there. Gosh darn it, you make me feel things. Aaliyah's words flood your thoughts as you walk away. Bard's making me feel things. Not okay with that. Can I level anybody up real quick? I don't think so, but... 15, maybe. Maybe. Some of my guys are gone. So I might have to use these dudes. Wait, where's, where's Trigivy? Trigivy! Trigivy, my man! Well, get somebody up there in case we have to use the guys that we have here. But I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, Luden is okay. All right. I actually think I'm going to pause my recording here and then come back just to make sure that I don't uh, mess anything up. <laughs> 